Hi, I'm Duncan and this is a parenting video. Most of the videos on this channel are about children, but you might find this useful for yourself or an older family member. So this video is about presbycusis, and what that is is a gradual hearing loss in both ears that occurs as people get older. It can be anything from mild to severe, so there's a big range of effects. It's pretty big, too. It affects 30% of people ages 65 to 75, and 40 to 50% of people age 75 and up. There are a bunch of symptoms, and some of the common ones are difficulty hearing people, uh, asking people to repeat themselves, difficulty hearing high-pitched sounds and voices, and having a difficult time hearing in noisy places or speaking on the telephone. There are a bunch of related health conditions, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and osteosclerosis, but those aren't necessarily causes. Uh, in terms of causes, the only big cause is hearing a lot of loud noises over the course of your life, although some other things can affect it, such as smoking. Now, aside from just having difficulty hearing, the important thing about learning about presbycusis is that it really affects quality of life. If somebody has presbycusis and it's untreated, it can lead to feelings of isolation and depression. And that can sound pretty bad, and it is, but it's good that the effects are largely reversible with treatment. So perhaps the most common treatment is getting hearing aids. and there are plenty of benefits, such as relieving depressive symptoms, uh, but it can also help others, such as family members who are having difficulty communicating, or if you have a caregiver, it will aid communication with that person as well. A lot of people, when they're diagnosed with presbycusis, will feel anxious and depressed, but getting hearing aids can alleviate that too. Another useful way to treat this is a cochlear implant, and many of the benefits will be similar to those as getting hearing aids. However, to determine whether that would be right for you is something that you should bring up if you talk to an audiologist. Now, in terms of management, perhaps the most important thing, if you don't have presbycusis, is to be aware of loud sounds, both when you're young and as you age. So you need to be careful about things like lawn mowers and leaf blowers and woodworking machinery, both at home and at work. So one of the one of the most useful and convenient ways to deal with that sort of thing is to wear earplugs. And you know, if somebody you know or if you work in an area that has a lot of loud noises, definitely consider using those. If you or someone else already has presbycusis, there are definitely several things you can do when communicating to aid in the communication, aside from treating it with hearing aids or other devices. You should face the person with the hearing loss. During conversations, it's important to turn off other sounds like radios or television. It's useful to speak slightly louder than normal, but don't shout. And also, don't exaggerate your sounds. Speak at a normal rate. And also, especially for someone who's definitely older, you might want to bring up the topic of the conversation every so often, so that way it's easier for them to remember that while they're processing the sound. That essentially covers most of the information that's available about presbycusis. Aside from current treatments, there are some studies about medicine that might help, but those are still being researched, so I don't know that I can recommend anything yet. That said, I will include some links in the description of this video, so if you want more information, hopefully those will help. So, I hope this video helped, and I hope you have a good day.